Greetings. Today we want to introduce you to the results of the research conducted by Levan Veshapidze and Zal Zeleteli. The scale displayed by spectral analysis of the audio material. In March of 2011, we started measuring the sound frequencies of the chants recorded by Arte Merkomaishuli as part of a project of the Chantic Center of the Georgian Patriarchate. The goal of this project was to manifest a musical scale. The measuring was conducted in the following way. Using the spectral analysis feature of the program ADAP Audition, we measured the first voice, Tkmeli, of the chants recorded by Artem El Komaishuli. As you can see, the red arrows are pointing to the current sound, above, and the frequency of this sound, below, measured in hertz. Even the nearest note of this sound and the distance, measured in cents, is displayed beside the sound frequency. In this case, the nearest note is F of the small octave, only 6 cents higher. We transferred the aforementioned chants to the program final and wrote the corresponding frequencies on top of the notes, which were displayed by the spectral analysis of ADAP Audition. <laughs> As you can see, all the notes have their respective frequencies written on top of them in hertz. We used corresponding programs to calculate the distances between each sound and measure each one's average frequency and ascertain the scale of the chance. As you can see, the chart shows us the number of the stanza, the note number, the frequency of the sound in hertz, the frequency of the next sound, also measured in hertz, and lastly, the distance, measured in cents, between each following sound. At first, we only measured the first voices, or tkmeli, of the troparions recorded by Artem Erkomaishul. The measurements prove that each troparion tone has its own musical scale. Let us remind you that we only have six troparion tones in Erkomaishul's recordings. The third and fifth tones of the troparion are missing. After this, in January 2012, already beyond the project of the Chanting Center of the Patriarchate, we measured the first voice, or Tkmeli, Dimitri Patarava's voice, of the Eleven Chants, also known as the Eleven Pearls, recorded by Dimitri Patarava, Varlam Simonishvili, and Artem Erkomaishvili in three voices. As you can see, not all of the notes have their frequencies written since measuring chants with three voices is connected to great difficulties. In most cases, the spectral analysis doesn't display the frequency of the first voice and they have to be searched in the many frequencies provided by the spectral analysis. Often, the spectral analysis shows us the overtone sound or frequencies two or more octaves higher or lower than the actual sound. In those cases, we have to divide or multiply those frequencies by two, three, or more, respectively. Sometimes the voice can't be measured at all, but it's still vital for the results. 
In these cases, we imitated the voice with our own, and when it became exactly like the voice in the recording, we recorded and eventually measured our voice using spectral analysis. Of course, the results received using this method may seem conditional to some people, but we'll cover this topic later on in the presentation. Let's continue talking about the 11 pearls. As a result of measuring and calculating, we came upon a very strange and unexpected fact. Our calculation of the average indices of the sounds on the scale of the chants made clear that the first voice, or Tkmeli, of all 11 chants are in the same scale. Even when the genres, voices and structures of each chant were different from each other, all 11 of them are in the same scale. The scale looks like the following. There is an octave consisting of 7 tones, but the distance between each note is the same, namely approximately 170 cents. You can see this below by looking at the numbers in the displayed scale. We use the term approximately because a deviation of 10, 20 or even 30 cents doesn't change anything because the human ear is almost unable to notice this difference during a chant or song. We'll let you hear differences of 10, 20 and 30 cents as an example. At first, let's hear a difference of 10 cents. Now, let's look at a 20 cent difference. Now, a 30 cent difference. As an example, we'll also present the chant Today in the Crown of Our Salvation, also recorded by Artemir Komaishvili. This is a troparion of the fourth tone of the Annunciation. The first four sounds are the same, but the measurements show that there is a 50 cent variation between them, and the human ear perceives them as the same. As you can see, the variation between the first two sounds in the upper example is almost 50 cents and the variation between the second and third is almost 40. The same situation is in the chant Co-Fighter of the Servants of the Word of God, recorded by Artemir Komaishvili. This is a troparion of Saint Nino. The first four sounds here are also the same, but the variation between them is almost 60 cents. Now, let's hear a 60 cent difference in the case of a continuous sound, which cannot be perceived by hearing separate ones. Let's return to the 11 pearls. Our result was that in the first voice of all the chants of the 11 pearls, we have only one musical scale. After this, we measured the first voice, Tkmeli, of the chant, Thy birth giving was shown, recorded in three voices by the choir of Gigoir Komaishvili. We got the same scale here. As you can see, the scale is displayed below, where the distance between the sounds are shown. The distances are almost the same, the maximum variation being 8 cents. The result was almost the same in the first voices Tkmeli, of the two three-voiced chants Thou art a vineyard and love has brought thee God, recorded by Artem, Anania and Vladimir Erkomaishvilis.
As you can see, the maximum variation in the scale of Thou Art Divine Yard is 10 cents. In the scale of Love Has Brought Thee God, the variation is also 10 cents. In the first voice, Tkmeli, of the chants, Thou who by the brightness and love has brought thee God, recorded by the choir of Samuel Chaulishvili, we got almost the same scale, albeit a slightly different one in the latter. The maximum variation in Thou who by the brightness is 10 to 15 cents as shown. And in Love Has Brought Thee God, it's almost 25 cents. On this slide, we have the main results of our measurements. On the upper part of the slide, an equidistant scale with seven equal numbers, which are the neighboring sounds of the scale, is displayed. The distance between those neighboring sounds is 171 cents. To simplify perception, the numbers presented in the chart are rounded. Below, the scales of 17 chants and the corresponding 7 distances are shown. In the green boxes, the variation from the 171 cents are displayed. As you can see, the variation is easily negligible in most cases as it is mostly less than 10 cents and unperceptible by the human ear. The greatest variation is 24 cents, which is also not hearable. Because of this, we have an equidistant scale on all 17 occasions. Suppositions based on the obtained results Based on the results, we suppose that this scale was common Georgian. We decided to play chants of different monastery schools and folk songs of different regions in this scale. Using the computer, we recorded the ordinary major scale in the range of 2.5 octaves and we sang each note for 10 seconds. After this, we placed the sounds in their respective frequencies using the same add up audition, that is, we distanced the neighboring 8 sounds within the octave equally from each other, divided them into separate sounds and created our own voice bank. We present you a descending scale played by our own voice using the computer in the scale discussed above. Now let's hear one voiced and three voiced versions of descending tetrachords in the same scale which end in the so-called Georgian cadence. Afterwards, we played different chants with our voice using the program Acid Pro. At first, we imported chants of the Shemokmedi Monastery School into Acid. We want to say a few words about our supposition, which is about the concept of the harmonization of voices. We think that it is necessary to maintain the purity of octaves and quints in Georgian chants and songs, because these intervals exist naturally in their clean form. And this will mean overtones. Let us remind you that according to the scale displayed by us, if we divide an octave, which consists of 1200 cents, precisely into 7 equal parts, a quint will be 686 cents, and a pure quint is 700 cents. This means that it's 14 cents away from the clean interval. When a quint is sounded with such a variation, it gives the listener a sense of impurity. In reality, when a singer sings one note at first, and then a sound which is distanced with such a quint, 686 cents, from it, there is no sense of uncleanliness, because the human ear cannot perceive these 14 cents. It can only perceive them when both notes sound at the same time, 
that is, when a harmonic interval is sung. Let us present you unclean quints played by the computer using our voice. At first, a quint as a melodic interval, and then as a harmonic one. Let us return to the chants voiced by us. As we said, we voiced some chants, at first based upon the eleven pearls, and then based on the recordings by Erkomaishuli and others, of the Shemokmedi Monastery School in the beginning, which were of different genres and voices. The result was unexpected. All the chants had a logical and organized sonority. Afterwards, we started working on the chants of the Gelati Monastery School. The sonority seemed strange and unusual at first, but we promptly concluded that this could be so because we have never heard the original versions of the chants of this school. We don't have recordings by competing choristers and singers of the chants of this school. We only have sheet music, in which there are frequent signs of nominal alteration. We chant those chants with edited signs of alteration, and we've trained our ears to the corresponding harmony during those 25 years. The sonority of the tertians was especially unusual. In this scale, the tertian is exactly between the major and minor tertians, approximately 350 cents. Here are tertians and triads played by the computer using our voice. The unusual sonority of the chants of the Gelati Monastery School was caused by the frequency of the parallelisms of the tertians, which occurs relatively less frequently in the chants of the Shemokmedi Monastery School. The sense of unusualness and strangeness disappeared when we listened to the same chant of the Gelati School for three or four times, but, of course, this perception is subjective. Afterwards, we played several chants of the Kaut Kachetian, Swetitzhoeli Monastery School, in the given scale. Here, the feeling was almost the same as the one we got when we listened to the Gelati chants, but less unusual in this case. The next stage was the playing of Georgian folk songs. We played songs of different genres of almost all regions in the given scale using the computer, and all of them had a strange and logical sonority, but we'll underline the fact that some details of some songs were not similar to the same details of the specific recordings. We'll explain the reason in the next part. Pardi and Shimpardi In the Kama Soba of Ioane Patonishvili, we come upon the following dialogue between Ioane and Methodi. Methodi Which kinds of chant tones exist? Ioane In every country, namely in Greece, Europe, Arabia and others, there are chants divided into eight tones, and in our country too. Since it's impossible to divide them into more than eight tones, the number of the pardis of the instruments are eight as well. Those pardis have different sounds when played. The kankledi, which is also known as shimpardi, is a bit different for the beauty of the mode. It is used in the same manner in the chants as in the instruments and they also derive from the eight-tone system. Here. Two terms have drawn our attention. These are pardi and kankledi, which is also known as shimpardi. Firstly, let us determine the exact definition of the term pardi. In Sulchan Sabas dictionary, we have the following explanation. Pardi, equal, equal to each other, a piece. The words to pardi, equal, shepardiba, equalization, and pardobitopa, relativity, are produced from this term. Ioana Jawahishvili explains the word pardi in another way. These are fretboard sections of an instrument, for example of a panduri, which Sulchan Saba calls saktsevis. Ioana Jawahishvili presents us with Grigol Obeliani's source, where the word is used with this definition. Contemporary teachers of the instrument mentioned above use the word with the same meaning. They also use the Russian term lad, 
lots of a panduri and etc. It may be supposed that this word was also used with this definition in Kama Soba, but in this case, it's interesting why they call the Saktsevi Pardi and not something else. We have measured typical samples of the folk Panduri and the same scale manifested itself as the one in the 11 pearls, namely the equidistant scale. We think that the so-called Saktsevis, fretboard sections, are called Pardis precisely because the sounds are equally distanced from each other. We present you with the Panduri sonority we measured and the scale that manifested itself. As you can see, the sounds are equidistant. Let us note that in most cases, the saktsevis of a panduri are not of the same size because in this case the sounds wouldn't be equally distanced from each other and we'd get different musical scales. We've named this Excel file the perfect panduri. The width of the fretboard sections of the panduri depends on the distance between the bridge and the first fret. On the displayed image, this distance is 25 centimeters. Its change will automatically cause the revising of the width of the fretboard sections in column B so that the musical scale will remain equidistant. The frequencies of the sounds made by the panduri are in column D. They are dependent upon the spreading speed of the waves. In column E we have the distance between neighboring sounds measured in cents. Those distances will remain the same regardless of the distance between the bridge and the first fret. This chart is a sort of recipe for making a good panduri. Let's get back to Kalma Soba. We think that the party mentioned in Kalma Soba indicates equidistant sounds or voices. Chants divided into eight tones and in our country too. Since it's impossible to divide them into more than eight tones, the number of the parties of the instruments are eight as well. We think that here they mean the eight equal sounds within the octave. And, if that's so, then this strengthens our supposition about the equidistant scale. Now let's see what the term Kankledi, which is also known as Shimpardi, means. Sulhan Saba explains the word Kankledi in the following manner. Kankledi, a lattice window, an iron window. We couldn't find the definition of the word Shimpardi. We think that Shimpardi is a space between two specific sounds which a singer or instrument player can use to make the mode more beautiful. We suppose that the bending of a party to the liking of the performer is meant here, that is, the changing the height of the sounds or voices of the musical scale in different periods of time by different degrees whilst the performance is improvised to beautify the mode, more specifically, coloring the mode in the mode configuration of the piece. We believe that this is meant in Kama Soba, where they talk about using the Kankledi, or Shimpardi, for beautifying the mode. For a rough example, a singer has to sing in C major, but he wants to lower the note E and sing E flat. In this case, with contemporary musicological understanding, we will be dealing with mode variation or modulation. According to Kama Soba, this is a slight beautification of the mode. 
The Kankledi, which is also known as Shimpadi, is a bit different for the beauty of the mode. It is used in the same manner in the chants as in the instruments. They also derive from the eight tone system. We suppose that the coloration of the mode is implied here. The term Shimpardi, if we give it the definition described above, has shed light upon the peculiarities of the scales of the chants recorded by Artemir Komaishvili. If we assume that he frequently used Shimpardis, or sounds deviating from the main sounds, then we would get different musical scales within each chant. We've got interesting results by measuring the first voice, or Tkmeli, of the chant Come, let us quaff recorded by Artemir Komaishvili and the same chant recorded by his brother Ananya. The measurements made clear that different musical scales manifested themselves in the same chant, but they seem as chants of the same sonority to the listener. As you can see, they proceed to the same notes with varying spacings. This suggests once again that both Artem and Ananya Erkomaishulis have used Shimpardis or deviated sounds at different times and on different notes, but we can't say on either recording that the chant was performed in the wrong way. We played the same chant using the musical scale found in the Eleven Pearls without Shimpardis or deviated sounds and its sonority was also straight and made sense. As an example, we want to present Saint Nino's second tone Kontakion, the Apostle distinguished by Christ, performed by Arte Merkomaishvili, and the same chant performed by Badri Toidze, first voice, Tkmeli, Azo Erkomaishvili, second voice, Mozakhili, and Arte Merkomaishvili, third voice, Bas, or Pani. In the given chant, Arte Merkomaishvili voices the word Kansaululi in the following way. We've transpositioned this on purpose because he chants in a low registry in the original recording. E F G F E D E D C D And Badri Toize voiced it with the following notes E F G F E D E flat D C D. The same situation presents itself in the phrase Kowalta Sahbtota. Now, let's hear these sections performed by Arte Merkomaishuli and Badri Toize. Please note that Artem Erkumashuli didn't interrupt Padri Toidze for singing an incorrect note. This means that a singer, chanter or instrument player, but a player of an instrument which doesn't have fixed saktsevis, has the freedom of deviating any given sound to their liking. As an example, we present you with a chonguri, Georgian traditional string instrument, piece Canary, performed by Yusuf Verulidze from Kobulit. He lowers the sound by 70 to 80 cents in the cadence part of each stanza. We'd like to note that the so-called Shimpardi is not exactly between the Pardis, like the black keys between the white ones on the piano with a deviation of 100 cents. According to the results from the measurements of Arte Merkomaishvili's chants, this deviation is approximately 40 to 60 cents. Although the distance between neighboring sounds should be 171 to 172 cents, 
are the mixed deviations of 110 to 130 cents or sometimes of 200 or even 220 cents. There are cases of 80 cent distances, that is, of deviations of almost half a tone. We have played the folk songs mentioned above keeping 40 cents shimpardis in mind and received realistic sonorities close to the ones in the recordings. As a conclusion of this part, we want to say that we suppose we have one musical scale, which we have named equidistant, but the chanter, singer or instrument player can deviate the sounds comprising this musical scale to their liking to beautify the mode. We'll note that shimpardis, or deviated sounds or notes, are used in an elliptic form in changis, chibonis, kudasturis, panduris and other such instruments. These are Georgian folk instruments, which have fixed sounds. About the variation of sounds voiced by humans. The following experiment was conducted by us. We created an F mixolydian scale in the program final with three second sounds. Afterwards, while hearing the aforementioned scale, we imitated it with our own voice. We recorded our voice simultaneously in the program out of audition. After this, we measured our recorded voice. Let us remind you that a full tone in a temperamental musical scale equals 200 cent and half a tone equals 100. In the scale we sung, we got 181, 195, 221, 202 and 178 cent spacing instead of the normal 200 cents in a full tone. On half tones, we got 86 and 132 cent spacings. Then, we repeated the same procedure and received roughly the same results. This was done while we were listening to the sound synthesized by the computer and we were singing along simultaneously. Afterwards, we tried singing the given scale without the help of the computer. We still received approximately the same results. Our voicing of the scales and the musical phrases resulted in the following musical scale. As you can see, the scale is very close to the temporal mental one, and the maximum variation is only 13 cents. Although we don't complain about our absolute pitch, such cases seem to be common in vocal performance. This is also supported by the recordings of Artem Erkomaishvili, Dimitri Patarawa, Gigo Erkomaishvili, and Samuel Chavleishvili. Features of the Manifested Musical Scale Although there is one musical scale, different chants and songs have different sonorities and different tendencies. As an example, we played a five-voiced part from a chant of Pilimon Koridze's sheet music, where there are four to five consecutive triads. Each one has a different tendency. Some have a minor one, others a major. Please listen. The cause of the different sonorities of the triads is still a subject of research. Based on the features of the given musical scale, we want to note that if a performer accidentally starts any stanza incorrectly during singing or chanting, he won't be obliged to use a sign of alteration because he'll stay in the same musical scale. And lastly, we believe that if we play the thousands of manuscripts that have remained only a sheet music in the musical scale described above, we will find out the approximate sonority of those chants. Now we offer you a collection of chants from different monastery schools and folk songs from different regions played in the musical scale mentioned above. Let us draw your attention to the fact that a half-tone interval is not used in any of the samples. All of them are in the same musical scale, which we consider common Georgian.
Thank you for your attention.
Thank you.